Hey guys, this is 7 Days to Die, and this is my guide, 10 Tips for Beginners. It comes from 150 hours in game, and plenty of tips from expert players while I've been streaming. So I want to share those with you, they've made a huge difference for me. It's been a lot of fun, so guys, here's my 10 Tips for Beginners. Weapons can be disassembled. When I first started playing this game, I didn't realize this, but you can actually take the ammunition from the guns you find and then scrap the parts that they are made up of, or even keep some of the parts you think would be good to make up other weapons. Of course, you'll need the schematics to be able to make them. When I placed it in this box here, above the craft symbol, what happened was the ammo was emptied into my backpack, eight shots. You can take this item out like so, and place it back in your inventory. You can do the same for these. These are zombie policemen. They are an excellent source of ammunition and guns. If you're in early stages of the game, if you can kill some of these, you will get your hands on some guns and some ammo much more quickly than actually crafting those individual items. One headshot with a gun usually does it. And then you'll find you can get weapons, ammunition, and such from that body. And you can see there I picked up some, even though that was a fairly risky maneuver. You can see here I picked up a gun and some arrows on that particular body. If you look here at the wall, you'll see I've replaced some of the cobblestone when it's been destroyed by the zombies with cement blocks. These are one of the best defences in game. You can reinforce them now, but I'm going to show you how to make cement blocks. You need a fair few ingredients to make cement blocks. Firstly, you need the cement mix. To be able to create the cement mix, you do need the schematic, so you'll need to find that first. But to make the cement mix, as you can see here, you need to create a cement mold which is this one here put the mold in you need stone to be able to make the cement mix once you've got the cement mix you can actually make concrete once you've got your cement mix to make concrete you need to put the cement mix and some gravel together you can get gravel say from cinder blocks so if we have a quick look here it gives you the option to break it down into gravel. You can also mine gravel. Once you put that together you will get a bucket of concrete. Like so, you can see the concrete mix here. Now the next stage to actually making those concrete blocks is to have what we call rebar frames. And you can make rebar frames from short iron pipes. To make short iron pipes you need to be able to forge iron. Let's have a look at the rebar frame here. If you make one of those, okay, there's your rebar frame. Now you need to make sure you've got some kind of tool. I have a nail gun, which is place down the rebar frame, like so. You then grab your tool. Now you will need some wood in your backpack. Just click it once and it puts this boarding around the rebar frame, into which you can now pour the concrete mix, like so. Now, to begin with, it's dark, but this will eventually dry. I've actually found it doesn't take too long to do this. Once it does, it will look like one of these over here with that characteristic four dots in the center. You can make two light sources, candles and torches. You can see the candle here. If you use torches too much in your build, when you get large zombie attacks, you can get lag. It's just a little thing that has actually caused me some grief in the past, and I thought I'd put here. One of the best ways of increasing your wellness, which increases your stamina and your health cap, is by eating good food. So one of the most common forms of food you can cook which will be really beneficial for your wellness is bacon and eggs. Obviously you need pork, you need a grill and you need two eggs for every piece of pork. 
see here. If we look at that, hover over there. That's plus one wellness. If we eat that now. Another, what seems to be a fairly basic tip is to always carry frames with you. And the reason is you can use them to bridge areas. So uh, here you can see I've got a jumping platform onto one of the walls around my base. And below we have spikes. Now, zombies could climb across here, but I can quickly take away these frames and suddenly they cannot get into this location. If you are to fill those frames, you have to destroy them before you can pick them up. And in fact, you won't pick up anything but debris. So always carry some frames with you, you can see here. And you can also use them to block doorways. Stamina levels in-game are really important. That's the blue bar down the bottom left-hand corner, which you'll probably be aware of. And as you strike, say for example, stone, you get tired. The minute though that your stamina drops below the bar, so you've run out of stamina, you do less damage to a block. And the same goes for when you're attacking creatures or enemies. So if you're running with no stamina, you're less effective. Bear that in mind. It's always worth getting stamina back so that you can harvest more quickly and do more effective damage to the enemy. This is a spider zombie that can climb walls. Damn. They are pretty vicious, okay? They also call in other zombies to combat situations. They will run in, so you have to try and get rid of your spider zombies if you can. They will keep calling new zombies to fight. If you do make pits to trap your zombies in, they will tunnel towards your base and your location if they sense you. They are in fact in here. You see, they've tunneled a escape tunnel if you like. All the way through here into the base. It's underneath the wall. I've created this whole cave system. And it basically undermines your entire base. It seems that zombies are attracted to doors. So I tend not to use them. I might use frames or some kind of structure where I could jump onto another structure when dealing with the P versus E. But if you want to draw zombies to a particular location, potentially away from your base, then this might be a good tactic to employ. You do need eight bits of forged iron to be able to craft one of these doors, you can see here. You can see I'm in a pit here where the zombies can fall into. And I'm gonna place the door between these two wooden blocks. You see that you have to have wooden blocks like this. It's no good just using frames, it won't place. You can't just place the door down randomly. But now, with any luck, the zombies will be drawn into this pit to this door. You can make your own water supply, your own well. You can see here, I've got one here. I've just built some cobblestone blocks around. I think you can use just about any type of block, really. All you need to do is build a bucket and do it in forged iron. Okay, once you've built your bucket, all you then do is go to a pool or a lake. You can find many of them in, in the desert um, biomes and just stand in the water, gather the water in the bucket. And then when you get back here, you can simply right click the bucket when you're holding it in your hands and it'll pour it into this location. And then you can fill up your jars from this water supply and as far as I have seen so far, it doesn't actually run out. So this is a really cool way of making yourself a uh, unlimited supply of water. I think they are changing this very soon, so we'll, we'll keep tabs on this one. So guys, there are the 10 tips and the bonus tip. I hope you found them useful. If you did, click the thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. This game is awesome. I hope you're enjoying it as well. 
and I look forward to hearing about your experiences in Seven Days to Die. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye.